Welcome back to this series on how to combine your art with publishing. I'm sharing my process on how to turn your artwork into published books for free and making it available to purchase on Amazon, the largest online selling platform in the world. So what does that mean for you? Well, a lot, including the potential to make recurring revenue, reach multiple markets from all around the world, and get your artwork into more people's homes and hands with no cost to you out of your pocket. Doesn't that make sense? smart business sense. How exciting to have your artwork in someone's hand, walking around, carrying it with them every day, using it as a planner or journal. Did I mention another revenue stream for you and for your artwork? And not just one sale either, but recurring sales that you don't have to manage. Ever heard of evergreen revenue? Well, this is it. Meaning you create something one time, put it out there and get repeat sales difficult to do with artwork unless you're doing prints, which costs money. With what I'm teaching you in this video series, you can take your artwork in and on your book designs published to Amazon for unlimited sales. How exciting is that? And smart. So far, you've seen the introduction to my process and video two, which is part one, where I walk you through a step-by-step -step tutorial on setting your book up in the free online graphical platform canva.com. We created the front matter, imported your artwork, and created template pages for a simple journal or planner. You can find both of these videos in the video description below, and I'll link them at the end so you can finish watching this video first. I do recommend you watch each video all the way through. Before you start, this will help you land your book layout. Then replay the video and walk through the steps with me, pausing as needed to complete the steps. Today's video, we're covering where to get additional graphics if needed. If you're not an artist, but the light bulb is on for this wonderful opportunity, by all means, you can still create Amazon books. Creating part two of your book, merging your book parts into one book, creating your book draft, and book editing. Finding free or inexpensive book editing. So smash the thumbs up, crush the subscribe button, and strap in. This train is leaving the station on creating part two of your book and sending it out for review. All right, so we're in Canva. I showed you how to create your Canva account in the previous video. All we need to do is go over to the left side of the page and we're going to get all your designs. It's cool. Canva saves everything for you. We're going to open up our working document. This is going to look a little bit different than it did from the last video because I turned the color back on and I'll show you how I did that. So this is where we left off. I did just a couple of things playing around here, but I'm going to show you what I did. So our book has opened up in Canva for us. And as you can see, I turned the color back on because the last time we were working in the black and white or the grayscale version. How did I do that? Let me show you how I turned that back on. Just click on your book and filter. And I can go right back to grayscale here. And there it is in grayscale. But I'm going to leave it in color for now because color just makes me happy. And I just really want to work in it in color today, not really for any other reason. I'm going to go ahead and hit my undo button on the blue ribbon here. So I'm just undoing it because I may have made a few adjustments to the color. When it comes to your artwork and creating your artwork, and then putting it on something digitally. If you choose to make color modifications, that is a personal preference. If you choose to modify the colors from what they are in the original painting, being going into the filter system and adjusting colors, because you can do that digitally. You can go over here and you can make adjustments. You can make the cover pop. You can brighten it up, and you can certainly do all that. I would never 
do that on a piece, sending a picture to someone for them to buy the original artwork. I would never color alter a photo on an original artwork that I was going to sell to someone because they're going to get the artwork expecting to get the colors they saw on the digital process on the computer, and it's not going to be the same. When it comes to publishing here, this is going to be how the book is published. This is going to be how they're going to get it. They're not buying an original artwork. They're buying what you have created and sent to print in publishing. So can you make these modifications in this without feeling like that you're altering an original artwork? Sure you can. If you were going to sell someone the original artwork, I would never. So yeah, All right. We are in part one because we need to finish part one and then we'll create part two. In part one, we have 11 pages and we can see right down here in the corner of the grid view, it tells me I have 11 pages. So we need to create, you can create how many pages maximum in Canva in a book? A hundred pages. So we're going to finish this out and create our hundred page. I did go ahead and add some elements here. And these elements that I added, I grabbed over from Canva. And I simply went over here to elements. And I typed in the search bar up here in elements. I typed paint. and I selected an element that came up in paint because I'm an artist and I wanted a paint swatch. So you can see all of these cool little paint swatches come up here in your elements section. And some of them have crowns by them. And what are we doing with the crowns? We're staying away from those. We do not want to use anything in our book that has a crown on it. So we want to strictly use a free element. This one that I have selected is a free element. You can see it is right here. And so I, all I did was click on it, dropped it over on my book, and then I rotated it. And you can see all I did was just grab the angle button there, the reposition button, and I just straightened it and made it straight. That's all I did was just kind of move that around a little bit. And then I put my text on top of it. We can delete this one because I already have it here. And so this is my subtitle because the book cover is going to have my title. And the title of my book is You Belong Among Wildflowers. So that's the title of this planner. My subtitle is Wildflowers Do It With Grace and Beauty. I'm a wildflower. I think I've got a duplicate page here because what I was doing was just kind of blowing the image up to see how I liked the image best. We created our front matter and we have our element page here. Okay, so now I need to decide. Obviously, I created, created a couple of pages here trying to figure out which one that I really liked best. I've got a decision to make which one of these I like. And I'm going to go with the one that matches what I have in the book. All I need to do is delete this page. And we're going to go with this second page. I'm going to do one thing before I do that. I'm going to make a copy of this just in case. I'm going to hop over to File. And because Canva saves everything for you, you can make copies. One of the great things I love about Canva, and this is by no means a Canva paid promotion. This is just me working in Canva and having used it for the past three years and just really loving it. If Canva wants to reach out and work with me, I would love that. This is just me showing you a program, an application that I really like. That's great. Right. So we've created our copy. What I'm going to do is delete the pages that I don't need. I'm going to work from the grid view here. I feel safer working in grid view because I don't like deleting anyway. And whenever I delete stuff, I like being able to see the whole picture. So our grid view is coming up. Let me also say I have closed the copy that I created because I don't want to get confused and work in the wrong copy. I'm working in our copy that is titled For Demo Watercolor Floral Journal. I have the different pages laid out here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit delete on this first page because I'm going to keep just this second page. That will be my right facing page. So let's 
hit the trash can. Once you highlight a page in grid view, it gives you the options underneath it to delete or duplicate. That's why it's so cool working in grid view. We don't need this page here because this will actually be what my cover page is going to look like. So I'm going to delete. I've got two copies of it for whatever reason. We'll just go ahead and delete that. There we have page one. And then on the back of page one, we have our front matter material. If you're looking at a book, so you have your cover of course, with your cover artwork on it, which I duplicate. It's just my process to duplicate my artwork on my first page. Uh, you don't have to do it that way. And then I have my subtitle here. You can see I've set this book up the same way. And then on the back of this page is going to be your front matter. And this um, front matter, I like the front matter being on the back of the page. And then this is going to be your ownership page. Since it's a journal or a planner, someone will want to put their information in there in case they misplace it. And we have our first template page. I actually have this one set up with the blank page first and then the element page as a right facing page. Let's take a look at that. This would be my blank page which I have the transparency of the flowers on it. I did decide to keep the transparency of the flowers on my blank page and then on this page would be my elements. So I'm alternating and this is going to be blank page with the flower transparency element page as a right facing page. Your right facing pages are your odd numbered pages. I'm going to flip that. I'm actually going to move my element page over and make it a left page and my blank page my right page. This is personal preference. You can set your book up any way that you want. This is just my preference for this particular book. So now I have the book laid out exactly the way that I want it. Need to add a page right here. Need to add all of the rest of our pages. And this is going to be just simply hitting duplicate and then moving the pages around. And this is so easy to do but it is a little bit time consuming. I have the pages lined up properly and so now it's just a matter of duplicating and moving them. But this so, is the only thing that I can say even slightly negative about Canva. The more that I duplicate pages and the bigger that my book gets in Canva, the slower Canva gets to work in. I've often wondered if it's my actual computer or if it's just internet connection. I'm not sure which it is, but I have noticed that every time the more the pages I add, the slower it gets. Now, sometimes if I get out of Canva, reboot my system, I can come back to it. It's not as sluggish again. Uh, these two pages are together. They're the same. So I need to just slide this over. We're going to highlight this and just duplicate this page. You can duplicate a couple of pages at a time and then move them around. It's just however you want to work. Once you highlight a page, you'll notice that two pages stay highlighted at the same time. So just be real careful with that. And then drag this over till you see the purple line appear when it comes to moving those pages around. Remember, it's super important to have your element pages exactly the way that you want them prior to making your duplicate pages. If you don't, you're going to have to delete them all again, make the tweaks on the page, and then recreate the pages. You do not want to go and try to tweak each and every page because ultimately they will not match. And I am speaking from experience on that one. My first book I actually published was not a journal or a planner. It was a hybrid. It was a book on keto. I do have quite a few videos on my channel about healthy living, positive living. That's how I live my life. The publishing is my love and it just made sense to teach people how to publish. I picked my art back up because I wanted to incorporate my art into publishing so it just made sense for me to make this transition from natural alternative strategy channel to streamline my channel into publishing 
and art. Really, really excited about this, and I hope you guys will continue to follow me. If you haven't hit subscribe, please do so, so that you don't miss any of the videos in this series. Hit the notification bell to all, because it will notify you when I release one of the new videos. Also, I will be releasing art videos on the various different art processes that I do. Anything that I do is super easy, and anybody can do it, so the process processes I'm going to show you will be with a variety of mediums from watercolor to colored pencils to oil pastels and acrylics. Um, they'll be super easy. I like this whole minimal art. Let's create a piece of artwork in one sitting and get it done. And then let's turn it into something that we can use and share with the world. Right. So I'm just continuing to move and keep them staggered every other one. All right, so we now have our 100 pages in our book. Yay! We need to just double check them and make sure that they are alternating correctly. I'm just scrolling back up and eyeballing this and make sure that I have all of my even numbered pages should be element pages. All of my odd numbered pages should be blank pages with the floral transparency on it. Another way you can look at it is by the first column because the first columns should all line up correctly and the last column should line up correctly. We can close out of our grid view now. Come back over to our page view. We're going to create the second copy of the book because we've got everything set up the way that we want. So we can go ahead and create part two of our book. On our front matter, we are still missing this ISBN, and I'm going to show you where to get that, because we can't print this just yet for publishing until we have that ISBN. We can go ahead and print this for editing and send it out. We highly recommend that regardless of what type of book you are publishing, you are using an editor to go over your book once you have completed it, put it together, send them that PDF. There's no need to spend a bunch of money on an editor. You certainly can if you want to. It's almost crazy to do that for this type of book. What I recommend is talk to your friends and family. Find out who would be interested in getting a copy of your book, an author copy of your book, or being your editor. You can actually have one or two of them. If you've got someone that claims or thinks of themselves as being a grammatical expert, then that's always a bonus. So if you have that one friend who is maybe into writing or reading and, and really likes that type of thing, by all means, utilize them. They will be honored, most likely, that you ask. I will also mention you in the credits as my editor. It gives them a reason to do it for you, but also it helps them build their resume, let's say that they wanted to maybe consult on the side as an editor, then, hey, they've got a published book out there with their name in it as editor. So it's a great way to sell that service and get that done for you with not very much expense out of your pocket, if any. And an author copy is relatively inexpensive. I'm talking under $10, depending on the book. You can offer them an author copy for doing your editing. And again, they're featured in the front matter material as your editor. I don't have that in this particular book. I have done that in other books. So if you're just doing a simple lined journal, it's still great to have another set of eyes on it as long as you make sure your front matter is correct. Again, if you don't have friends or family that's going to work as an editor for you, then you can certainly go on to Fiverr, F-I-B-E-R-R dot com. I'll link that in the video description below. There are all kinds of people on there that sell their services, so you can literally get your editing done for $10 or $20. Now, before we move on to creating our second copy of our book, I want to talk to you about another free application, and that is Pixabay. 
This is an online service that has people that post pictures, graphics, artwork for free. You can go on to pixabay.com, create an account, and you can literally search for anything on here. You can search for literally anything that you can think of. These pictures or graphics will pop up. You can use them as long as they are not in this top section here. And to use those graphics, all you do is you can just click on these and grab the graphic. If you can click the free download here, it'll tell you right here the license for the particular image you're taking. So it says free commercial use, no attribution required. So you can go ahead and just grab that. You can get it in uh, different sizes. I recommend you do at least HD. Hit download. And when you click download, it's going to ask you to sign in. As a registered user, no CAPTCHA is presented to you. So sign in or sign up. It's free. You can donate and sometimes you can just go over here and buy coffee for them if you're using someone's artworks that you love a lot or their photos. It is a great community to be a part of. It is free. The reason that I started working with my own artwork is because I wanted that uniqueness. There are tons of photos and images out there on Pixabay. It's not very often that you'll see something duplicated, but you never know. You might because it is a public website. So by creating your own graphics and your own pieces of art, you can guarantee that nobody else is going to have the same thing in their book or journal or planner that you have. I did want to show you pixabay.com because I promised I would show you where to get free graphics in case you're not an artist or you don't have time or maybe you're just at a spot where you're like, I need a graphic for this, but I don't have time to make one. I just want to get it and move on. I'll show you here. They actually have images, photos. They have vector images, vector graphics, illustrations, and videos. And so, like I said, you can literally search for it. Moving back over to our document. We have finished with part one. So now we want to create part two of our book. We have, as you can see in the bottom corner here, our grid, we have our hundred pages. Now we need to duplicate our book. So we're going to go over to File, and we're going to hit Make a Copy. Canva is now duplicating that book that we just created, and we're making a copy because we set it up exactly like we wanted, and we need 200 pages in our planner, and then we're going to go in and delete those front matter pages that we don't need, then we will merge those two documents together into one book. Then we can send them out for editing. So we now have our copy of our book, and it tells you right here, copy of uh, for demo. So what I'm going to do is change the name of it, because the last thing you want to do is get confused in your working copies. And this is going to be part two and just click off of it and then it will save that name. Now you have your original for demo and you have your part two for demo or whatever your title is. But now let's go back to the grid view. So I'm going to just click on my grid view here. It's just easier to delete pages in the grid view. You can see what you're doing because once you delete those front matter pages, we're going to add the additional pages so that we have 100 pages in part two and we have a 200 page book. Now, if you were creating a novel or a how-to book, you wouldn't necessarily need to duplicate. You could simply just create a new book. I've just found it's just so much easier to duplicate and keep the size dimensions and all of that. Remember I saved a copy of the book, 11 pages in it. So you can literally just use that and all of your sizes are there. You could just make a copy of that and delete all of those pages and you don't have to worry about recreating the size. So we have our book part two here. We need to delete these front matter pages. So let's just go ahead and hit delete. And then the last one we want to delete is ownership page. 
So that leaves us starting with an element page. And I want to just go back to the original book. And I want to just make sure what my last page is. Okay, so page 100 is an element page. So page 1 of or part 2 needs to be a transparency page. So we're going to delete this one. If Canva wasn't being so glitchy, I could literally just move that page. But it's just going to be easier to delete it come down to the bottom and create some additional pages. So there is our 100 pages in part two. Yay! All right. So element pages are even numbered pages and our transparency pages are odd number pages. So I'm just going to close out of this grid view here in part two. We're going to print part two because part two is ready to be printed. All right, to print part two, all we have to do is go to the top right of the screen, click download, and in the drop down menu, we're looking for PDF print. This is the high quality multi page document, not the standard. We want the high quality, and we're going to click print. And it's all 100 pages, yes. So we're going to do download. And this is going to download our document. And this will take just a minute to download. And then once it downloads, we'll take a look at our PDF. Part two is still finishing up. So we can go ahead and print part one. And so you get your book put together and get it over to someone to start editing it for you. And then the next video will be creating your publishing account. I'll show you how to get that ISBN in your publishing account. And then you'll add that into your finalized book copy because you'll make edits. While you're making the edits, you'll add your ISBN in there. And then you'll print your book one last time, merge it together, and then we will upload it into the publishing. For now, we're in part one, our original copy. We're just going to go ahead and hit download again and change this to what? PDF print, high quality, right? And of course, download. So here is part two, part two finally finished the download here. This is so exciting. Oh, and here comes part one. I love this. Both of them finished uh, downloading at the same time. Here's part one of your book. This is, I just, I love this part. When you get to actually see what your book is going to look like, it's starting to really shape up. It's another reason why I like doing it in color, even if it's going to print it in black and white. I just love working in color. Subtitle is Wildflowers Doing It With Great and beauty. Remember the title of our book is You Belong Among Wildflowers. Subtitle on our first page. Here's our foreword. We'll put our ISBN here. Once we have completed editing, here are our book pages. We can take a look at the book view in two pages instead of just single pages. We actually get to see how our book is going to look laid out. Look at this. This is just so cool. I love this. First forward facing page. So nothing will be beside that. And then you have your forward or your front matter here and then your ownership page. And it goes right into your element page and your blank page. So I'm going to close that out. And um, this is part two. We have finished what we need to do in Canva today. So the next application that we're going to open is an application called a Small PDF. There's plenty of PDF programs you can use out there that are free. This is one that I like and have been using for a number of years. They do have a free version. I think you get to merge two a day. And if you go over that, then you have to move up to the paid version. So you want to be conscious of that. I use the Pro version just because I've been using it for three years. There's a lot of functionality that small PDF has. It's really inexpensive. So I use it throughout the whole year for a lot of different things. You can sign, compress, merge. There's so many things you can do with small PDF. We have selected to merge a document and that's what we're going to do. We're going to merge. We're going to, yeah. We're going to merge our document. You can do it two ways. You can choose your files here or you can drag and drop them and drag them over. 
now we can hit merge down here and just go ahead and merge them. Or, as you can see, if I hover over them, I can rotate them. I can zoom into them. I can trash it. I'm actually going to just merge it exactly the way I have it because I have it right. I'm going to click merge PDF. Now it's creating our merged document file and this should be relatively quick. So you can preview your book. It's here. Um, all 200 pages is right here so you can preview it before you download it. I know I set it up right so let's hit download. Our book is downloading. Now you can see we have our merged document copy and I know of this because it tells me at the top the name of my document and it always titles it the first document and then at the end of it it adds a dashed merged. You can scroll down you can see that you have 200 pages and if you have any question about how your document is stitched together and you want to verify those pages because I'm like overkill on verifying. I've actually sent books to print mistakenly by not double checking this. You can see 99, 100, so I'm alternating pages. So we're good to go. Yay, I love this. I get so excited because this is your book. This is what it's going to look like. You're right there. You're going to see your artwork in print out there for people. And I love this part of it to be able to know that this is going to be out there for the world to use my artwork and something that I've created for people to be able to maybe cherish or, or use in their daily life. I just... I love it. We have our PDF and the next thing that we would do with our PDF is send it to our editor that we have selected to work with. In an upcoming video, we're going to work on your cover, which is so exciting because that's where you really get to see your artwork shine and create that book cover. Listen up, I've got several videos on my channel to help you in this process while inspiring your artsy side with lots more coming online weekly, so make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. There's a ton of info here, guys. I get it, and that's why I do a live workshop. So, if you've got questions, hit me in the comments below. I do my best to respond to all respectful comments and questions. See the video description for additional links. In addition, what next? Click right here for the other videos in this series and here for the fun artsy stuff. So go ahead and click. I'll see you over there.